So I'll call the meeting to order at 6.02, um, Monday, June 24th. Any adjustments to the select board agenda from the select board members? Diana? Mm, well, I think maybe towards the end. Oh, I've got it on here, complaint to health department. Okay, okay. never mind. Great. So we all had a chance to look at the minutes. Um, mm. What would you like to do with the minutes? Let's sign them. Motion to approve? Yes. All right, Liz makes a motion to approve the minutes. Any discussion? Mm -hmm. All those in favor of approving the minutes from June 10th, 2024 as written, please say aye. 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 Me, the minutes are approved. Did you want extra coffee, Liz? Liz? Of the minutes, sure. Thank you. All right. Sign those. Mm -hmm. Um, then so then we have a space here on the agenda for public comment. Um, I also want to note that we do have on the agenda uh, an item for the Greenwood Lake Association so we can wait if, if that's what you're here for. Um, but if there are other public that would like to make a comment, now is, aside from that, um, now is the time. Oh, I do have questions of the Greenwood Lake. Uh, Great. Would you mind just for the record stating your name and uh, yeah, I'm yeah. Dennis Burrell. Dennis Burrell. Yeah. Um, nice to meet you. Um, my question is: like, it's a rumor I've heard from a few people. You guys are talking about having a meeting with the small group of appraisal in the town. A property reappraisal. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Just. Property. No, it's it's going to be all properties. It's mandated by the state. We can't Correct. get it done until probably two years from now because there aren't enough people to do it. But okay, it's going to be time long. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Would you prefer we just do the lakes? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I got one on my face. So. <laughs> 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 Well, if there's no other public comment, we can move on to um, the line or the item, which is the Greenwood Lake, Lake Association. Yeah, and if you would just yeah. for your record, say, state your name. Yeah. My name is Bob Campbell. I am the current president of the Greenwood Lake Association. Again, and <laughs> anyway, just uh, a couple things, uh, kinds of questions. Uh, you know, we all know the land trust and uh, the parking area off County Road, and I just I kind of wish. Would have been maybe some better communication between the town and the association. Maybe it not wasn't required or whatever. But I, I do know that if a, a couple of our members in, that are right across from there, I'm just really not happy about it. Um, by the time we heard about it, it was pretty much empty. So that being said, um, Sophie had also mentioned that there was a signage there indicating day parking only. So it's been a couple months now, and there is no signage. I didn't know if that's something the town uh, deals with them or it's something I would have to bring up with her directly uh, from the email that she had sent. I think we're happy to reach out to her. It's what? We're happy to reach out to her and ask her about no, the signage. Uh, yeah, she should. Sure. If she yeah, said they would do it. Uh, I guess I just do like it's, not a it's not a project. It's not a town project, so there's not yeah. much we could do about that. Yeah. But, yeah, anyway. but I think a phone call from us would be... That would be great. Yeah, yeah. So it's easy. Well, there would be signage about day parking yep. only. And, so, I don't know. I don't see that it's got much use or whatever. But anyway, that's just my thoughts. Okay. Yeah. Hey, the waterfall is probably running last <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and normally it's not running even. So. Mm. Um, is there any other... Um, is, the, is the town working with the land trust to acquire any other property around Green Lake? We don't, we don't think we usually work with We haven't land worked trust. with the land They usually trust. work with the private landowners and... Yeah, so you have you heard any rumors, rumors or? when they acquired the land from Myers? No. No? Uh, well, it they was, kept a, town, us informed, it was but, a town issue and yeah. it was, it definitely came up at quite a few meetings. Um, I wasn't on the board at the time, so... Yeah. Um, imagine that comes off of the tax records and stuff, off the tax No, I think they're still in current use. Yeah. 
Oh, it did. I'm pretty sure we, that was brought up. Okay. They're in, stay, still in current use, so. Yeah. So yeah. If, I, if I understand, like we were, we were in, the, the select board was informed mm -hmm. by the Myers family that they were having a conversation with the land trust. Sure. And that is, you know, that was a negotiation kind of, between, kind of, yeah. And yeah. so mm -hmm. they, they kind of kept, I think, the select board informed. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and, I'll, and Michael has a little more information. But um, beyond that, yeah. it, it was a transaction between two private landowners. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Michael. So, so I was on the select board at the time, you know, and it was basically um, the EB High and the Meyer family sold that property to not the Vermont Land Trust, it's the New England um, Northeast Wilderness Trust. Right. Um, and it didn't, its status as far as taxes or uh, did not change at all. It was on um, the, whatever they call it, where you have, you have your property, you know, forested or whatever, current land. And right. So right. It stayed the same. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, cool. Um, and the other, I think, uh, obviously we're going to be up to the planning commission meeting because we saw uh, the minutes about them looking for uh, access for a public beach, um, <laughs> some lakes around here. Um, I can state to you folks that the, the association and its seven <laughs> landowners are unanimously against that. Uh, we do have, obviously, you know, we don't own the lake, but uh, we, we have a, a fishing access there. And, uh, but we're, we're not in favor of that, and we will be going to the planning commission just to can, make, can I make our statement. Sure, Michael, yeah. I'm in charge of the planning commission now, and uh, Town Beach has been a pipe dream of the town for years. Mm -hmm. um, we did get, you know, we, in our last meeting, which was last week, um, that curve around County Road, you know, just, it's kind of like an ideal place, but right. we know that that's a pipe dream and it will never happen. Yeah. Um, almost all of the lake associations in Woodbury are definitely opposed to Town Beach. Yeah. Um, so it was just kind of a pipe dream conversation that we included in our minutes. Cool. But there's no threat or, or movement to, uh, um, to take any land for a Town Beach. And there's no... No land. There's no, no land, land that's yeah. not privately owned. It's all private. Right. Right. So, right. and it's all privately owned. So. Yeah. Yeah. Or somebody would have to donate their dog. Yeah. What's going to be in the pockets? Well, that's cool. That's all, that's all I have. You know, we, we, we want to, we, I think we've always been good neighbors to the town and we want to continue to be. Our annual meeting is on Saturday, July 20th at mm -hmm. 5 in the afternoon. It's a little pop like thing. If any of you would like to come and attend and uh, see what we do at our meetings, uh, we'd be more than happy to have you there. So that's just a personal invitation for me on behalf of the Green Lake Association. Can I tell a funny story? Oh, of course. Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> years ago, I mean, we're probably talking 20 years ago, Wayne Dunlap was on the Planning Commission. Uh -huh. And he looked on the map and he saw this great big beautiful lake up on the hill, East Long Pond. Greenwood used to be West Long Pond, but now it's Greenwood. And he thought it was so unfair that Greenwood has so much boat traffic and East Long doesn't have any because even though its waters belong to the state, there's no public access. Yeah. And, oh my God, I never knew there were so many camp owners up there because they all came here oh, for a that. meeting. <laughs> <laughs> they all showed up for a meeting and, uh, yeah. Well, it's, it's certainly changed from the days when I was growing up over here to have, you know, 20 ski boats and two pontoon boats. Mm. And now I think we only have one power boat in on the lake so far. I, I haven't been our <laughs> boat in yet. Um, it's still... It's, I, I say during the week, it's, a, it's like a private mm -hmm. over there. It's pretty peaceful. Yeah. So, but thank you again. Uh, that's all we mm -hmm. have. I'm curious on those three points, and I appreciate the feedback. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Is that your phone? Oh, yeah. I didn't have a question. I'm sure. <laughs> we're glad I'm oh. the secretary of the association. Yeah. If we were to have problems with the parking situation, who would we call? It's not a town, so it, it depends if it's a town, if it's in the town right away, like there's a gully or something, you could call the town, but otherwise call the land trust. It's, I mean, the wilderness. 
think for, mo for the most immediate it's action on something, you, you would go to the land trust. But you it's feel their, free to. It's their property. Feel free to contact us for Sophia whatever. Sophia indicated that she would make sure that the people on her mm -hmm. had her number. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll, we'll check with them uh, to see if they do or not. And that they could call her with any issues. So I got to mm -hmm. take her for a word on that. Can I ask if there haven't been any issues as of yet, correct? Not that I've heard of. The word's not really out. It's only been here. Yeah. Here for, um, mm. um, so Sophie did send a letter to all of the camp owners right along where the parking area is. And there were two people uh, that contacted me. Um, Chris my name was a part of that letter. Yeah. Um, and one of them was worried about a power line that would go to this camp. And, yeah. um, yeah, the other one so was worried. Apparently, in her letter, Sophie had mentioned that there was a boat access there, uh, which was on private land, and that was quickly cleared up. So, those are the only two responses yeah. that I'm aware of from the letter that she right. sent out. And she did send it to whoever was the. Um, I got a copy. You got a copy of that. Too. And um, and that was I, I was unaware that that was private land at the time. And I found out where it is, and that will be signed by trespassing, just as an extra precautionary method. Mm -hmm. uh, um, not that I'm not, as a mm -hmm. word, yeah. uh, But no, I'm not so worried about At first, I was worried about looking out people parking there, and I just want, you know, like public beach access. But I didn't realize that was all mm -hmm. private. So. I wouldn't be surprised if you see a little more action there in the, in the wintertime. Um, in the wintertime, nobody's around. Right. But, but I think it, I know the word is out about the skiing up there. Yeah. So I think that that it will be a popular place to to ski in the winter. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Thanks. Okay, thank you. I have a question. Did so they just did the land trust put that parking lot in on their own? Yeah. Did they paid for it? Yep. Cool. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> thank you very much. Take care. Thanks for helping with the chairs. <laughs> yeah, I'm awesome. You're going to have to put them away. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Man. All right. We can move on to um, Robin and the town clerk's report. The first things that I have, when you're having an issue with having your ants, oh. as you start to walk up the stairs, working on the right-hand side, mm -hmm. Somebody came in Thursday and said, you've got an issue out there, and they've got a pretty good pile of sawdust or shavings or whatever you want to call it mm. going on out there. In the town office? Yes. And sometime in the near future, we're going to have to think about more volume. Mm. I only have one space left for recording books. Yeah. Just so you guys have that in the back of your mind somewhere. Mm -hmm. So can those be stored off site? Is that like a No. No. They need to be stored on site. There might be some stuff in the vault now that doesn't have to be in the vault. Yeah. And uh, I'd be happy to look over some of that with you if you want to talk about how we can, you know, once you get stuff downstairs, I think there's some of that stuff that can go downstairs maybe when get new shelving and stuff like that. Okay. And the furnace is probably about 85% in. They worked on it last Monday and Tuesday. Thought they were coming back Wednesday, but I haven't seen them since. Mm -hmm. So I will give them a call tomorrow and see if they've got us still on their schedule for finishing this up. Yeah. So they didn't turn the heat on. No, they didn't turn the heat on. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> So I know they still have to change that ductwork that, that they're gonna they're gonna just flip it over so that yeah. the hot air comes out at this height rather than at the floor height. So. Yeah. So, but they know that they have to be there when you're open, right? Yes. Or they have a key to the bulkhead. No. no. Okay. Speaking of the bulkhead, with that rain that we got yesterday, we did have some water that came in. I did notice that. Yeah. <coughs> How much water? Same as uh, the the um, concrete was just wet down there. It mm. 
can't, some of it came along the side of that little room where the pressure tank is. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then it went over by the furnace, but it didn't take up that whole section of room through there. So I don't know if just the bulkhead is going to fix that for us, or if we have to get some drainage around the outside of that. Is that bulkhead? I would hope that as part uh, of our insurance money, we can just re replace that whole door. There's gaps between like the foundation and the, where the siding starts mm -hmm. and the sheeting, so it's kind of open. Yeah. And that, this week, I'm keeping my schedule pretty open so I can help Randy with year end. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Anything that she needs to have done, lifted, moved, mm -hmm. whatever. Okay. okay. And that's about what I've got. All right. I don't know why we even put a front row up. Nobody ever wants to sit there. <laughs> you could have a whole row. <laughs> don't be insulted. <laughs> so sorry. That's great that she's able to come back and long enough to get the end of the year stuff finished. That's what she's hoping for, but she was pretty sore today when she mm -hmm. was yeah. there. Yep. So is it yeah. worth um, looking at like pest control or like an exterminator for the ants? Is it to that level? What are you thinking? Dana's the one that found it for us. Well, oh. I would at least get something and spray around the foundation of the perimeter there. Oh yeah. Oh. In, so. so that's all it takes is some spray. I would try it. Yeah. Just go to all the songs on me and get some spray. I get it now. Like I can get a gallon chug here and stuff. I'm trying to spray it. I think it's worth that one or something. I'm gonna spray the bottom. So who's gonna do the spraying? Mm -hmm. Who's gonna do the spraying? So who's who's got a, a account? Who's on the account at uh, Poolins? The town's got one. Yeah, but but it has to be certain people that are allowed to use it. No. I know my name's on there. Yeah, Is your I know. Lucy's on it. Yeah, Elby's on it. So, who wants to buy the spray? And who wants to <laughs> apply it? Right? Uh, I do that. I'll that. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Yeah. On your list of things. Sure. <laughs> Thanks, Alvin. Okay. Up. And Brandy did get payroll done, invoices done. So we got a bunch for you guys to sign, and she did her reports. And for income, she has a credit of $5,824.50, which is burial fees and library donations recordings. Delinquent taxes was $5,403.37. The Woodbury School overpayment of $22,037.37. That came back? Too? That came back. Hazen School overpayment, $28,646.56. Cool. And then from VLTC, we got, huh, she's got $31,981.18, which equals $93,892.98. Then we have a state Vermont library grant of $300, traffic fines of $83.50. And then for the last two weeks, the payroll was $7,021.02. AP, $37,731.22. And she transferred from the money market to the checking account $40,000. Can you leave that yeah, with, with the payroll, payroll with the payroll orders? And, <laughs> okay, that'd be great. Thank you, Robin. Mm -hmm. Took care of both the clerks and the treasurer's report. It sounds mm -hmm. like. And mm -hmm. um, Paul. Moving fast. All right. So the insurance change what they wanted to cover first. We've mm -hmm. got 
we'll be switching to VIFS starting July 1st off the lead. But we did launch, so we'll be taking over that with this building and that building. And they'll take the vehicle coverage and all the liability and general injury all What's stuff. the company again? What's the name of the company? Uh, VIFS Volunteer Firefighters mm -hmm. Insurance Corporation. So the one nuance we had discovered in this process was that the workman's comp is a uh, it's the same policy essentially that will be on at the new company. So the town has already paid that policy from January to December 31st. So mm. we'll continue. And I told Robin that, or not Robin, Brandy, she'll send us quarterly bills for the workman's comp. And then the new broker record will be up, um, uh, I think, January 1st, 2025. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to make you aware of that we'll still be transferring a little bit of money back and forth just to cover that because. Apparently, there's an assigned risk policy. It's the same company, and you can't cancel the policy and restart the policy. You have to continue the same policy until the end of the calendar year mm -hmm. or the fiscal year. So that's the one little nuance of the insurance. I just want to make you aware of it. Mm -hmm. And brand new, mm -hmm. so hopefully it'll all pan out. And, and then mm -hmm. when it switches, we'll be insuring the annex and the, the fire station. How will uh, that cost compare workers' comp? It should be the same. Okay. Yeah, it's the same policy. Okay. Yeah, it's the same with sign. I guess they assign what they call sign risk pools. Oh, yeah. Okay. So Depends on how many. We're essentially in the we'll same pool, so yeah. that's good news. It really didn't cost any more than what we've been paying. Mm -hmm. So you're going to insure the whole building? We have, sure. as we have that, yeah. We've been paying all the insurance, all the heat, all the electric over there ever since that was, food shelf was put on there. So, okay. I mean, that's a conversation we probably got more from you at some point. So Decide what to do with that bill, and that's moving mm -hmm. out there. Some place, some that take over that electric and, mm -hmm. and uh, insurance and uh, uh, heat. But we're not we're not ready to to do that. You can just put it on your radar for a future conversation. <coughs> Progress looks pretty good over there. Yeah, you see we got a foundation there, putting drainage in. I guess we got a little bit of water in there, but I guess you got to expect that when you have a hole in the drain as much as it is last night. But as far as I know, the, the building itself is supposed to start appearing sometime in mid-July. Mm -hmm. So you should see the wow. slab get finished, all the slab plumbing in the next couple mm -hmm. of weeks. And, and do you carry insurance on the building as it's being built? So we have a, we have a uh, builder's risk policy yep. over there that we, we pay mm -hmm. for until that's done. And then once we have occupancy, then we'll, we'll insure it with our new policy. Yep. So, so what this builder's risk is insuring, a lot, even the stuff, is a lot of stuff has been ordered. And some of it will be, will be built for it and stored off site, and we'll pay for all that stuff and, and pay to insure it, I should say. Yep. Uh, when it's out of warehouse or wherever it might be. So we do have a builder's risk policy. The bank wouldn't let you have it without it. So, so that's on radar for hopefully November ish. We'll, mm. we'll be in there, I hope. Mm. But you all know how construction can be. Yeah. <laughs> well, nothing ugly surprised over there, wise. A little bit of a spring we found at the bottom of the bay. Mm -hmm. unexpected and everything else seems to have been. So they're going to just seed and mulch that bank? Yeah. Some kind of special. Well, they get to it soon. <laughs> Some special. I think they're going to use these uh, straw mats. Yeah. You hitch down. And you well, that's what they use uh, over yeah. here on the ground. Yeah, yeah. Like these, uh, these there should be something more rugged for that kind of a slope. It's actually pretty stable. You see how hard it really is. Yeah. Some washing. Mm -hmm. Get some stuff on there pretty soon. Mm -hmm. to keep washing. But mm -hmm. I don't it was nice to see that it didn't. It wasn't a mudslide. Yeah, I was like, I was just this morning. Like, it didn't slide. I really expected because the bank kind of goes up and goes down the other side. And there's a lot of ledge in there. We hit the ledge in a few places, and then you know, there's some dirt. I don't yeah. think it's going to go anywhere. There's enough. There's probably 25 feet behind the building. So if anything ever has a problem, it's not. probably have, to have some kind of a wall. It's, I think we're just going to see that again. Really? Yeah, that's oh, the plan. Good. We can't get any engineer or any wall company who wants to. To deal with it. Oh, so, well then. Welcome to today's we don't want liability issues. <laughs> oh. So that's that. Mm -hmm. We haven't moved that far with FEMA. Um, Skip and commiserate with me that <laughs> I've had two more meetings in the last month with FEMA and they're quite a loss. Um, they don't even know what they're supposed to be doing. I got quite frustrated with them when I met with them Thursday. And you use did you talk to Chase Thierman from the state? I had to deal with the guy named Andrew Slack. Okay, I got a different guy. So there's, there's the state has hired a contractor 
and then I have a state liaison for emergency management. So they were in a meeting where I had expressed my frustration with FEMA as nicely as I could. Mm -hmm. And um, they met with me Friday, and we've created a strategy to try to get this building dealt with as far as uh, completing the what we're going to, what the disposition of the funds is going to be for the recovery. So, understanding recovery, we were in response, recovery, the next steps, mitigation, we're still stuck mm -hmm. in recovery, right? The roads mm -hmm. are kind of in the same spot that you get the check, and then, then there's so, so we're trying to maximize the amount that FEMA could pay us for that building mm -hmm. to the end that with the USDA grant, we have matching money we've got to come up with. So, the goal is to try to make that at least match. What we've got is we don't have to give you money from anything else. That, that's the plan. Anyway. So the money you get from a buyout. We, is that what there's the buyout, there's um, the, the, uh, the uh, recovery oh. funds. To, to, oh. So essentially they've got to put it back to where it was. And what I found out from the state is they, they're also required to make it code compliant, structurally compliant, ADA compliant. So I've had to go hire an architect to go and do that. And that building, really, we've got to establish a budget of what it would cost to do mm. that. But that's what FEMA actually owes us according to their own rules, which is mm. what we found out Friday. So that could be, who knows? Mm -hmm. But that's the number we got to work with, not the insurance yeah. number. So that's, mm. and that's all I know really. Mm. Um, so I'm working to get that. What they said that we should go, we're going to bring that number to FEMA and say, no, oh, this is what you're supposed to be working with. Right now, we're no further than we were in December with the mm -hmm. building because they just completely dropped the ball. They didn't do a site inspection. They didn't do a whole bunch of things. So we'll see if that is resolved in a few mm -hmm. weeks here. I just don't know. Yeah. And then USDA, I'm getting the architect hired. I'm getting the engineers hired to get the front end part of it done mm -hmm. so we can apply for the money, which that's been a little bit of a challenge too. Just the, just the documents to tell you what to do are pages and pages and pages long to mm -hmm. you know, keep finding the engineers who say, oh, no, you can do it, and then they read it, they go, no, I got to have to it. So right now I'm trying to get an environmental study done. But apparently I need to get a different environmental study company because the one we were going to use is probably to do it, they can't do it. So welcome to my nightmare. Mm -hmm. So we've got, there's a lot of approaches. The buyout stuff is in, according to John Gordon, he said our mm -hmm. application is in. Where that goes, I don't know. So, mm -hmm. the, again, the goal of this is to come up with the, the I think it's around 375000 you've got to come up with up to that to match what's, what, what uh, mm -hmm. the Congress has put in. We try to make it as least confusing as possible. So, where we land, I don't know yet. The goal is to get the project submitted by the end of summer, mm -hmm. get it approved. We could go to construction documents mm -hmm. by mid to late fall and out to bid, hopefully, late. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, building next spring. I'm smiling when mm -hmm. I say that because that's ambitious from looking at the hill we've got to climb. But yeah, you know, it only it took like 10 years to get this part. Yeah, you expect to get the next part in a well, year? The USDA is pushing it. She's the head of the USDA wants us to, oh, oh, to good. get moving. So, oh, good. and it wants us to get this moving. So, right. hopefully, right now we're holding it up. We're just going to get our front end stuff done, but it's a little frustrating trying to. I don't want to pay for stuff twice. I'm trying to make sure mm -hmm. the architect I've hired is familiar with submitting and managing um, USDA projects. Because anyone who's dealt with a federal thing realizes there's really restrictive um, administrative requirements. So we're going to, I'm going to be setting up the architect to do all, mm -hmm. all that. So we're going to stay on top of it, not with this. Mm -hmm. so, and I don't want to keep guessing because it costs money to guess. But I'll keep you up to date as mm -hmm. soon as I know stuff. And the, the, the buyouts, I'm not, you remember how long the last one took, right? Mm -hmm. This one will, if, if that comes to pass, mm -hmm. you know, know that that's a given, um, you guys will be interested in it. If you're mm -hmm. really involved in that, because you're going to end up having to be the person who does it. I'll take any questions if you have them. I have one request. Sure. When your contractors start building and they park around yep. here, can you get them so they park into yeah, the I, curb? Is it a long I, I curb? I noticed that. Yeah, I'll park and, them. And the only reason why I'm asking is because when the post office yeah. rents the space, they also rent parking spaces. Yeah, well, I saw that the other day. They parked in the, yeah. Mm -hmm. The problem we're having is they had concrete people here. It's like, 
I'll mention it. I'll talk to Spades tomorrow mm -hmm. and just have him okay. mention it because that way I can't, I don't know, I'm always going to know everyone who's coming. Right. I'll tell Spades. If you have a problem, just let me know and I'll, I'll go with it. Okay, thank you. Although, because mm -hmm. I, can't, I can't promise you there won't be another issue just because I don't know who all's coming. Right. But we'll try. <laughs> Fair enough? Yeah. <laughs> so again, if there's a problem, call me. Okay. And I'll, I'll be with it. Thanks. Pretty thorough. Sure, and sweet. Yeah. Appreciate mm -hmm. it. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Road report. Uh, We're having a little bicycle guy. Uh, well, he's not here, right? Why not? Michael's not you know? here. Unless. Does he need to be here? You were going to make a decision on the. Sun. I know. It's, I, I actually. Missed that by accident, so I, I'm happy to get back up here a second, and uh, we can talk to Alfie if you don't mind. Nobody's here to, no. <laughs> to uh, make the case. Yeah, we'll just have to clear it off. Well, weren't we basing it on Alfie was going to price some posts? Did that. Yep. Did that. Did we already get prices from Michael? I can't remember. He did. He sent us the prices for the sites. He was going to get was prices. Right? Yeah. He he did get. He did. Prices. Okay. Pretty much the same evening. Mm -hmm. You're right. Um, they came in later that evening. Was, when we got was home. it eighteen hundred dollars? That sounds familiar. I can find that. Yeah. Um, would you find so out? The sign, the sign, posts and anchors equal one hundred and ten dollars a piece. Okay. And they need sixteen of them. I think is what they uh, were saying. There were eight sites, and they need two, two signs. So 16 total. All right, you were gonna go get some, maybe not all. I, I can't hear. Okay. Okay. You what? I have the sign, the sign post. Oh, okay, the sign, yeah, the post. Right. Yeah. I did get signs, they are Mm-hmm. The pups. So we just have to approve getting the signs. You didn't, you didn't get the signs. Nobody supported this. No. We haven't approved the signs yet. So um, he's got. He said that there are only fourteen. It turns out there's only fourteen. Oh. At sixty-five twenty-five um, with shipping, it's eighty-three thirty. Uh, so you're talking two hundred dollars a piece he said before it, you include the labor. You call it ninety nine hundred fifty-five dollars just for the signs. Minus the previously approved money, eight hundred and forty. But we said that was gone, right? That's not. Yeah, that, yeah. like eight hundred dollars from years ago. That's history. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it sounds like it's roughly nine hundred and fifty-five dollars for just the signs, and two thousand dollars for the posts mm -hmm. or thereabouts. So three grand. Mm-hmm. I'm waiting for somebody to convince me that it's a good idea. Go for it. Do you ride a bicycle? What? Do you ride a bicycle? No, I don't. <laughs> Try it on the ground or Try it where it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You see how you do. Yeah. I'm sure I would be scared. Okay. Anytime. <laughs> this, is, this is for public safety. You know, you, I mean, I'm, I'm just not convinced that it's going to help public safety. If, it, if I really thought it was, yeah, I'd be willing to spend whatever, but I just, I think it's possible that they could be misinterpreted and tell bicyclers that they can ride in the middle of the road with no problems. I'd love to tell a story about that, but not with a camera on. So. But it, so, it, so, it does sound like they can, right? They can what? Ride, like, legally. If I understood our conversation last time, legally, bicyclists have the right to, no, on, yeah, on those corners, corners, ride in the middle of in the middle of the lane, not the middle of the road. Um, which I mean, they're supposed to, at least in cities, they're supposed to kind of ride with the traffic, but they can't really do that here because they don't go fast enough. I mean, they don't go 35 miles an hour. The cars are usually going 35, you know, in a town where you're talking 15, 20 miles an hour, the bikes can keep up. Anyways. Do we have money in the budget? We, did we talk about this for the signs, not the posts, for the signs themselves? We didn't. We had, uh, there was $2,000 in the budget last year, and there's $2,000 in the budget next year. That's the sign budget, and it didn't include, 
consideration of this? Our whole budget. Okay. For which fiscal year? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. For which fiscal year? So two thousand dollars was for fiscal year twenty four, and as of the last meeting, there was about a thousand dollars left, and Alfie went and overspent that. But so there'll be two thousand dollars more, which is the sign budget for FY twenty five. And we anticipate. Well, we usually do. We usually use all of that. Usually, uh, you yeah, hard to tell without going back. Mm -hmm. Due to that same, I can see them cut, cutting it right off on hacksaw. I've seen them run over, you know, huh. the yard with a fair amount of signs. Okay. Like and we carried a few down from the top of Woodbury Mountain last fall. Yeah. You found them up there? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yeah. I didn't find them, um, but uh, the Sophie were the person that found them. <laughs> Hmm. So what's the board, uh, what would the board like to do in terms of the bicycle safety Should we let Michael sales? have another opportunity to sell us on his proposal, his idea? I feel he like we've to be talked it to that, death, to, honestly. I feel, like we've, what? I feel like we've talked it to death already and we just need to make a decision. My opinion. Okay, well, he was here at the last meeting and he did send us a lot of uh, information. Um, so, except that he didn't have anything on the prices. If we buy the signs um, and that depletes your budget, sign budget, where do we pull money from for signs that are stolen or need to be replaced for the rest of the year? Just go over budget. Just go over budget. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yep. So we can play with that some. I would prefer the board to make that decision at that mm -hmm. point, but uh, two thousand dollars is a lot of money to just pull from another lineup. Sure. So what would the board think about um, tackling this as a multi year project? So we buy a certain number of signs that was that is within our budget this year and then plan for and maybe we hit the worst spots and, and leave that to um, leave that to the folks that know but prioritize some of these spots more than others we buy half the signs this year and plan to buy the other half next year I think that is a very good idea you would I like Chris's idea you like that idea Yep. You want to answer? As Alfie said, and I think you did too, Chris, that this is a budget, this is a budget. So just going over this first sheet on Alfie's budget, for Congress, budget, budgeting for fiscal year 24 for Congress is $10,000. Actual expenditures is $3,959. So there's approximately $6,000 in Congress that is not spent. Fiscal year 24. So we have approximately 13 or 14 days left in that one in 24. So why? I did that you, why too. Why wouldn't you use a carryover to spend $2,000 to sign up to potentially save some And then just get it done with not. For, yeah, look at the bottom line though. The whole highway budget is $47,000 in the negative. So yeah, you could go, I did that too. I went through these and tried to figure out which was over and which was under, but really, yeah, well, because of FEMA, everything is screwed up this year. I was gonna say, because of FEMA, some of these line items aren't exactly. Right. Because mm -hmm. particularly colors, when you bought colors, it went under the FEMA line item and not come out of the color mm -hmm. line item. Mm -hmm. So, but I agree, I agree with Skip. There's, there are other, line items that may have money left over to help with this. I'm just saying I'm on the board to make that decision. 
So it's, it's not that we don't have the money or we can't come up with the money, it's that whether or not we think it's a justifiable expense. I'm a bit torn on this, but I do feel like we have some really bad corners. I get nervous when my kids are riding their bikes. I get nervous sometimes when I'm running because I've almost been hit. Um, and you think I, that those signs will say bikes use full lane? I don't think it matters really what the sign says. Mm -hmm. I think to me it's more about bringing driver's attention to the fact that it's a bad corner and you need to slow mm -hmm. down. Yeah. So if those signs are what has been determined to be the best option to do that, like I'm fine with the signs mm -hmm. themselves. Um, and I'm a little bit torn because I hate to just keep throwing money out at things, but I think that is probably a good idea. Um, and it's already been approved is the other thing. Like that's the other piece. Mm -hmm. The select board previously has already approved it. So um, they're long gone. Well, <laughs> well, they're not quite long gone. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, you know, I guess if, um, if it sounds like to me, and this is my two cents, is that there's a strong opinion that it could really save lives. And if uh, it's a small price to pay, it's like, it's like having good snow tires, right? Yeah. Well, if I, it sense, the, right? I certainly would be willing to spend any money if I thought it was going to have that impact. I think it will slow people down. I think it's a unique sign, and there presumably there are no signs indicating that it's a dangerous turn corner. So there's no signage now. Yeah. So I guess I would be inclined to go for it, but um, how we do it, I'm, I'm, I'm flexible whether we do it all mm -hmm. right now, or whether we pay for it over a couple of years. But um, if we're going to do it, maybe we just do it. Skip. So you can also uh, take into account. That there will be FEMA money coming in in FY25. And you think that's going to happen? <laughs> after today, I don't know. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so there'll be approximately $300,000 coming in mm -hmm. in FY25. Mm -hmm. So that'll help with Alfie's budget, and will help with the municipal budget. So, you know, with, with all of that, with some surplus in the budget already, I'll make a motion that we approve the purchase of $1,000 worth of signs, which presumably would be 14 signs for um, certain corner, uh, blind corners in town. Um, Are you doing my math? Thousand enough? No. I don't think so. He's got fourteen at eighty-three thirty. So I have one thousand one hundred sixty-six dollars and twenty cents. All right. Do I'll I amend <laughs> my motion. I guess it was bad math. They, uh, it was an estimate. Yeah. Um, fourteen at. 8330. All right. That's what I got. Yeah. So I'll, I'll amend the motion to approve $1,200. Up to $1,200. Up to $1,200 in signs. Well, we're also approving the post. Right. We're going to approve the whole thing. I thought that they were uh, already purchased. No, but, no, that was the deal last week at the last meeting. We were going to talk about the total cost. Okay. Whether or not it was too grand, you said. Rob, it's now that I'm here in 14, it's lower. They're $110 a piece for a, per sign. So it's going to be about $200 a piece, right? Would the, did you say the signs were 88 something? That signs were 83.30, yeah. Plus 110? Yeah. Yeah, so they'll call it 200 times 14. So total of two thousand seven hundred six dollars and twenty cents for everything. So I will, will withdraw my motion and make a new motion to approve the purchase of signs and posts, not to exceed twenty eight hundred dollars. 
Not including labor. Not including labor. And I'm assuming it sounds like Michael was going to point out the locations. Yeah. So not for me. He was. <clears throat> yeah. He's got a laugh already. Okay. Yeah. Because that's kind of crucial if there if there are certain sites, certain corners Correct. that don't want to be placed correctly. Yeah, I think that was the deal that he would do. Um, Any more discussion? Diane? No, I just I just don't like the sign itself. I don't mind a bicycle share the road or a you know curve ahead or something like that. It would make to me it makes more sense. I just don't like the idea of bicycles being told that they can use the whole lane and they don't have to get over because even if they're in the middle of their lane, you're still going to have to go around them when you're driving. So, I just don't. I think that that's the point. They're in the middle of the lane, so while they're on the blind curve, yeah. you don't pass them. You oh, wait until you get around the blind curve and then you can, oh, am I right? Okay. Well, it's yeah, just like yeah, a car. Yeah. Yeah. car in front of you, you yeah. on a blind car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they will, around blind corners, they're going to move out into the middle of the lane. Hmm. Well, hmm. Liz, any I'm, other discussion? I'm good. All right. Mm -hmm. So a motion has been made. All those in favor of approving purchase of the signs, please say aye. 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 All those against? I'm not really going to say no. Ab abstain. No, I don't think it's a good idea. I'll abstain, yeah. <laughs> All right, so motion passes um, with one abstention. Okay. All right. Hopefully that's the most contentious mm -hmm. thing I didn't worry about tonight. Oh. Yeah. Sign. <laughs> <laughs> right? oh. <laughs> Did I just jinx it? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, now we can do the road report. Okay. All right. Uh, so, County Road Extension, still waiting on that. Uh, last night's rain washed it again. Mm -hmm. Not near as bad, nowhere near as bad. Mm -hmm. um, it'll just take a little bit of time and then a little bit of gravel, that's it. Yeah. So, still waiting on the hydraulic study for that one culvert. Is the upper culvert in, or the lower culvert? Or? The lower culvert is in. It is in? Yeah. And how did that handle the water? Uh, fine. Great. Yeah. Yep. I didn't see any, any mm -hmm. issues with that. Yeah. Uh, we put a bigger one in than what was there before. Yep. So it should be all set there. Um, and then we have moved on to what, uh, West Woodbury. And we got the banks where the brook was the road was road. We got that hardened. Uh, the new culvert that I'm waiting for was waiting to finish that will come tomorrow morning. He called me this afternoon so we can finish that. Uh, since then with this new rain, there there are culverts up there that are just too small. I've I've found two of them that have washed out every almost every time it rains. I'm sorry, where where's that? In West Woodbury. Oh, on the class four section, or no? No, no this is oh, on, okay. This is on the mm -hmm. road, and so I feel like we need to upgrade them. They are 15s now, and I want to go with 18, which is state standard. Um, and while we've got the bigger excavator, I feel like it's the best time to do that. So I think I'm going to do that this week. Mm -hmm. In between fixing the washouts and stuff that occurred over the weekend. But um, our grader broke down today. Yep. It should be a very simple fix, but it was unexpected. It was, it was what? It was, it was unexpected. Oh, I thought you said uninspected. <laughs> <laughs> so the service guy's coming tomorrow. We should be up and running with that. So oh. not, a, not a big deal. But, Does uh, that machine run pretty much nonstop all summer? Pretty much. Pretty much, yeah. 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 Um, so it's just it's something to do with the DEP 
PDF, which is the exhaust fluid. Um, and they've got the parts, so they're coming tomorrow, hopefully, and it should be fixed up. But kind of put me in a bind today because trying to fix the roads from the rain and washing um, and mm. the radar went down at like 10 o'clock. I'm like, hey, what am I going to do? You know, what am I going to do? So I ended up sending the bucket loader out and we scraped off a bunch of, filled in a bunch of the rust to get mm -hmm. it fixed up. Um, Was there a lot of road damage? A fair amount. Yeah. A fair amount. Kind of scattered. Mostly the hills because the rain came so fast. Mm -hmm. um, there's still a bunch that we still have to do. Um, West Woodbury didn't get it bad, but I didn't get a machine up there, so mm -hmm. I'm going to go there tomorrow, hopefully. Um, but yeah, it was, it was severe. It was pretty severe. Mm -hmm. I'm glad it didn't last as long as the <laughs> last year because it was the same magnitude of rain. Mm -hmm. you know, it was, Really? Yeah. Mm. Um, I don't know how cows made out, but the herd was pretty very good. I had to ask the guy what he to me. Yeah. So, all in all, I think we lucked out uh, this time. But uh, I think that it's important that we continue to change out these culverts to bigger sizes because this rain is mm -hmm. just going to keep coming. So, um, while we got them, and as Skip pointed out, our budget uh, allows for it, so I, I want to I want to keep sizing them up. That makes sense. Um, any questions? I don't have any questions. So you still have County Road waiting for the H and H, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So they're still going to have to keep that big uh, excavator? Uh, no, I can probably, if it comes to that, I can change it to the small. Can you uh, rent it by the week or something? I rented it for a month. Uh huh. And so it's here, that month expires this week. Yeah. At the end of this week, I believe. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, West Woodbury is the last big one, mm -hmm. other than the one in West County. But like I said, I can do that with the small one, unless it's unless they tell us it has to be some enormous um, size call. But we won't know that until we get the age and age. Hmm. Well, you know, it's up to you if you need it. I guess. Yeah. Well, it, it kind of kills me to have it sit. Sit still too, you know, because um, you pay for it, whether it's sitting or working. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to keep it as busy as I can. Okay. Um, which this week I'll be fine because I could want to change those other pulpits mm -hmm. um, to a bigger size. Mm -hmm. And you're not planning on hanging on to it for the H and H study rate right? because you don't know when that's going to be. Right. That okay. Could be, that could be mm -hmm. August. It could yeah. Be December. We don't know. On that. Mm -hmm. Cool. I don't want to hold on to it. Yeah. Okay. What's the tracking fee to get it? I'm just curious, like, how much it costs to re renew the rental if you've given it back already. Oh, it comes from a small player. Uh huh. So I actually truck it myself. Okay. In my truck. Yeah. So I charge you um, 250 bucks. Okay. So. So it's not, it's not crazy. Uh, yeah. But. Probably better than keeping it when we don't really need it, right? Yeah. 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 And just so you know, if, if you were hiring bell bands, it would be easily five hundred bucks. Okay. So well, I'm thank you for the deal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> because it's convenient. It's it's, mm -hmm. it's convenient for like if it's on West County Road, it was convenient for you to bring it to uh, to West River. Uh huh. It's more about timing. If I had to call the bell bands and then wait for them for two days or yeah. whatnot. Mm. It's just, I can move it uh, when I need it. Makes sense. So, and I'm all insured, it's all totally, <laughs> yeah. totally legal. Um, 
So I probably will let that machine go back at the end of this, mm. this one month, at least. Unless something new comes up. Um, yeah, so no. You can jump in again. Oh, if you need I, to. I have something. Mm -hmm. I did finally remember to uh, email Swenson today, and uh, Kevin is going to have somebody um, contact me about the rock drill. In which case, they'll have to coordinate with you. I don't know whether that is something that you go and borrow the equipment, or they. I hope the equipment comes with an operator. Yeah. Sure. yeah. So they just have to. Um, get it scheduled, and, and if uh, what's his name can make it, the engineer. Nate. Nate. Yeah, he said if he could make it, great. If he, but if not, I guess. Okay. Do do. Should I be part of that schedule? Yes. That yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, really. No. Do I do I call Nate to start? Uh, well, with him? he's, he's, he's gonna. Him? One of them is going to get in touch with me, and then I'll hand it over to you, because that's the way Kevin left it. So. Okay. Yeah. Just let me know when you want me. To yeah. Jump yeah. In. I don't. I don't. I don't need to be involved any further. This is for <laughs> what, you guys? Sorry. I'm a drill for, for to, to um, for the town highway 23 to check for ledge. Mm -hmm. I guess that's what. Oh. Yeah. Gotcha. To know what's what's under there and how far down. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's what the drill will do for us. Got it. And Randy's gonna donate that for us, or what? Is Randy gonna donate that for us, or? I didn't ask. I mean, I didn't mention that. I just said Woodbury needs more help, or something like that. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> well, we can. We can cross. I can cross that bridge. Right. Yeah. yeah they can send us a bill if they want. We can add it to the female list. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just yeah, do that. No? Huh? It's part of the project. It's part of the project. Yeah, if they, I mean, if we had to hire somebody else, it would be a lot more expensive and a lot more difficult to scheduling and stuff if they can just run down the road. <laughs> I don't know how important it is for Nate to be there. Very. He wants to. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. He's so, want to take samples and measure the distance of each holes. Okay. And you'll yeah. keep, that, keep track of that. Okay. Uh, so he definitely doesn't want to be there. Okay. Yeah. You want me just to take that over now? I can call Nate and see what his scheduling is. Sure. Kind of figure out when it can all happen. Sure. Okay. Yeah. When one of them gets back to me tomorrow, I'll just send that along to you, to your Woodbury garage email. Yep. Okay. Yep. Great. Yeah, because the sooner we get that, the easier it will be mm. for the actual design work. Yeah. Right. And wouldn't it be great if we could start that? Mm -hmm. This fall. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. We didn't. He didn't. Nate didn't think he'd have that report until right end of the summer, though, right? Right. Right. But yeah. we did some of his work done for him. Oh we right. Got the hydraulic stuff done. Yep. Yeah. And now if we can get the drilling done. Yeah. He's got everything he needs. Yeah. He's got everything he needs. He's okay. just figuring out Great. materials and sizes and mm -hmm. shapes and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So I'll, I'll get with him. We'll get with Nate and see where he's at. Okay. Yeah. Good. So there will be an RFP issue for work proposal of those Tom Highway and 23 or 24 bridges. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's part of the, that's part of the contract with. Ruggles Engineering. Yeah, that's not me, though. <laughs> I'm not going to write that one. <laughs> and he, I think I said this before, but he expects, once he gets the design work, to get the uh, um, bidding process going, but there won't be any time for construction this year. But he'll get in line for getting those little cement things Made. The box cover. If that's what we don't know, it's going to be fine. Right. 
could be a aluminum or a galvanized yeah. pipe, which would be faster and mm -hmm. easier. Yeah, I think that, I mean, those H and H studies, they had a list of different options. I mean, it's you know, of course the engineer can design whatever they want, but but they list that one first. But I guess according to Nate, that's kind of easy to put in and not very expensive compared to some. But um, but it's uh, takes a while to to get the stuff materials. Yeah. Well, we, we as a town have a say in what we put there, too. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. I just want to make that clear. Because <laughs> we do. Not me. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll, I'll get a hold of Nate and get that, okay. get that process. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Alfred. Okay. Moving on, we have our recovery officer's report. Skip. As it is. Thank you. 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 Meeting with just Danielle, Danielle and myself. Seems like she and I did more work than, than we did work. Just she and I have been really good when we work with the team. I'll get into that. So uh, we met last June 19th and we completed all the small permanent work project certifications and technology. And what this is is just Danielle and I certifying all the work. And the projects that have been completed are complete. All the work is completed. We certify that. And that allows us FEMA to hopefully obligate some funds so we can start doing something. So, the, uh, so anyhow, that's all done for all the projects Great. in Woodbury. Wow. And they're completed once it's all done. So it's, it's, in essence, it's the all up to FEMA. Um, so I had a meeting today with him and I don't know if that later. So, uh, so I was feeling a little frustrated today and I sent an email to my friend named Andrew Flack, who's a, the state of the law rep for Todd O'Bear and such like this. So I, I'll just do the, the abridged version. I said, Danielle and I have completed and signed the small permanent work certifications and acknowledgements. They're all in his hands. We've been uploaded to the grants portal and even emailed to our uh, program development manager. So, and, and that's, that's key. When they have this, there's no reason why I can't move forward with these projects. So, I went on and asked, I'm curious why none of the work projects have been designated as obligated. Once they obligate a project, that starts the money flow. Mm. So, some of these documents have been in people's hands since April 15th, which is crazy. And so I went on, if I'm naive to believe the simplified procedure to streamline the process and make it less onerous for the applicants, we as applicants. And so then I went on, as I decided as part of a conference call this morning, which I was with 16 staffers, facilitating the infamous tabletop site visits and it turned into a service. So he wrote back and he said, it looks like you have three projects at the Consolidated Resource Center. That's that place in Puerto Rico. That look at our stuff and say, yeah, you did it right or you did it not right when they come back with questions. Not a peep from those folks down there. Mm -hmm. Don't know what they do. So, Anyhow, he, he seems to believe that Old Quarry Road will be the first obligated project. <laughs> but he doesn't put a date to, to that. So he went on to say, yeah, you were not you. Simplified procedures only meant it less, slightly less numerous for the applicants. 
And that data doesn't require the town to produce all the documents, which we've already done. Timesheets, you know, materials, <laughs> rental equipment, we've done all that stuff. And so in essence, you said you were, you were naive. So how did I know that? I was curious what you told him after you told me. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't say no. So anyway, that's, that's where we stand. It's, you know, everything is just, it, it's there. And so this guy, Andy Flack, said uh, that Tom Woodbury has gone through four program delivery managers mm. since last September. Mm. We are now on our third mitigation and hmm. the folks I met with today, I met with seven FEMA people doing a tabletop site visit for Town Highway 23, 24 bridges hmm. in the town offices. And hmm. we, we didn't get anything done. We were supposed to fill out a form, which is eight pages long. And this is a site inspection report, category C for bridges. Didn't touch this one for Tom Highway 24, didn't touch one for Tom Highway 23, mm. nor did we touch one for the Tom offices. It was just chatter, 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 chatter between them. One of the poor guys has COVID, so he sounded like he was dying on the phone. And they, they, they really have to get the record. If Danielle and I are frustrated, we're pretty level-headed people. I can just mm -hmm. imagine what other folks are going through. So yeah, I have another conference call with this guy tomorrow to just he and I to do the tabletop site inspections for the bridges and the town offices. So I think we'll be much more productive tomorrow. I'm hoping. And it's this guy, Andrew, that you do this? Do oh, this no, Andrew is the uh, state guy. The guy I'm uh, meeting with is a new guy. We have another new guy named Vincent Jensen. He's the uh, guy who was in the state of Vermont for four weeks, got COVID, and now he's back in Louisiana. And doesn't sound like it as well. So anyhow, that's for tomorrow, and I hope to get through these three documents so we can move forward the bridges and uh, the town offices and they're very much interested in the bridges. You know, they were asking me about how, what is the, the design of the and I don't know about the PDE. I said all the information, the H and H studies, engineering reports, it's all on the grants portal. And you know, you guys gotta read that. You know, we're going up for an hour and a and based on that we'll move forward with with the uh, projects. But, I don't expect that to happen until 2025. Mm. So I'll wait for an extension in December for these two projects and just move forward with it. But, you know, it can be uh, frustrating, but we're almost here. I'd like to see some money come. And that would cause me to go ahead and talk to you. So that's tomorrow. Uh, I have a meeting. And currently we have one project, right? That's in We have three projects that are in the CRC. But we have one that's obligated, right? Or none? No. None. Okay. This guy in the flag seems to believe that Old Corey Road and Lake Hill Road project would be the first. The first, project, right. Because it's been there for a long time. Mm. That would make sense. But yeah, we'll see. So I'll know more Wednesday. Danielle will be at that meeting on Wednesday. And, uh, you cannot send them any more documentation, you send them everything. <laughs> it's just like, you have a speech ahead of you, so they got to look at it. Yeah, so, so that's it for my report. I hope I didn't sound too frustrated. <laughs> <laughs>
for that later. <laughs> No, again, thank you for this work. I mean, mm -hmm. It has got to be incredibly frustrating to do all this. It's good. Yeah. I <laughs> believe that we appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So I think we're talking about mitigation now. Kind of yeah, it looks like you and Michael are both up next again um, for the flood mitigation projects. Buck Lake Brook in Cabot Road. So there was an opportunity presented to us. Michael, do you want me to start with you? I mean, you're two different things, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is an opportunity that, out of the blue, uh, a gentleman named Edmund Long sent to our program delivery manager and forwarded it to me. I, sent, I think I sent it to you guys. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, by the way, we seem to believe that there's a mitigation opportunity on Cabot Road. So, and the email from Pina, mitigation costs could be up to the project cost, which is a little bit over $17,000. And if they do, please have them provide details of what they want to do, including dimensions and associated costs. So, so you would think of something that might cost seventeen thousand dollars, and then yeah, but it's not as easy as that. No. <laughs> was this tied to a specific section of road? Like, I was, I saw your email, but I wasn't yeah, quite sure what it meant. Oh, you yeah, didn't see that. So that was the uh, beginning and ending of the section of the road, and uh, it's at eight hundred feet that was wiped out, I believe, in Capitol Road, on the right hand side of the road. So they believe that there's a mitigation opportunity there. I don't know how they came to that conclusion. You've not had so much debt, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Michael, when you did that walkthrough with all those people, did they come all the way down the I don't know where hill? the part I'm kind of Is it where the bank washed out? I think it's below the old quarry. Entrance? Is that where the mud slide was? Is that true? Is it where the mud slide was? No, the mud slide was further up. Okay. I think, right? Isn't this, isn't this the old quarry access? Yeah. So it's the old quarry, the old quarry access. Oh, okay. So it would be by Mark and Carrie Demersis then? Correct. That's right. Hmm. You go right through their houses in between. Did anything um, happen then? Yes, so we had a major flood in there. Okay. Uh, and that's one of our sites. That's one of our projects. So Is it between the two coordinates on the map? Like, there's the one and the two coordinates? Yes. It's the section in between those? That's correct. Okay. About 800 feet, 800 feet long. Yeah. Hmm. So this is an opportunity to do a better job at a place you've already fixed? Is that? That's what they're saying. Okay. <laughs> And you got a call out of the blue from Just, a FEMA rep, or Edmund Long is works for FEMA? Yeah, he's a FEMA mitigation officer. Okay. And somehow, the, uh, out of the blue said, hey, we think you have a chance to have a mitigation project for that particular section of County Road. And we're prepared to pay you $17,000, blah, 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 which is the cost of the fix. But he didn't propose the fix. No, so it, yeah. So we yeah, have the fix and the double up or the well, Right. So they're going to pay us 17000 and change for the fix. If we choose to mitigate it, they'll pay us up to another 17000 for hmm. mitigation. The mitigation. They would mitigate the mitigation? If this was a mitigation. Oh, okay. So the one that was already done wasn't mitigated. It was just put back the now they want to say, we'll give you another 17 to mitigate. to mitigate. But we have to come up with that mitigation plan. Plan, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Which good. would involve another engineer and another study, yeah, or is that something that Alfie, you could... That's what I, I think it would just call for like stormline ditching, upgrading the size of culverts, right? Wouldn't that be mitigation? That could be. Mm -hmm. I, it would be good, I think, to try to find out from FEMA what 
do things that should happen. Because uh, this is like the government showing up at your door and saying, hey, we're the government, we to help. Yeah, could we get our three hundred and something thousand dollars instead of seventeen thousand dollars? <laughs> yeah, well, it could be a different department, a different section of FEMA looking at this. Too, it right? is. It's an entirely different section. Right. So, so it's totally it separate from the actual FEMA. Yeah. Well, this is mitigation FEMA, where we've yeah. been working with just fixing. 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 Yeah. Right. But I think it's it's worth looking at if we can if yeah. they can give us some sort of detailed criteria of what they expect for a uh -huh. that uh, it might be worth getting that, that money for. Definitely worth it. But it might, yeah, it might be good for you to tell them what what well, you're we thinking. Can, I mean, if you think of something. If you can put a thumbnail together on how you would do it, you know, whether it's utilizing the orange book, the way that they have specifications of how you would fix something like this. The orange book? Is that what you said? What's that? It's like a mm -hmm. V-Trans handbook. Yeah. It's not a guideline for yeah. maintaining roads. Yeah. Mm. All the specs and how to build ditches and install collar sizing and all that stuff. Mm. So I put a disclaimer in my last sentence in the email. I said, at a minimum, there'd be more work in the road crew, <laughs> more work with the people and points of contact, more money from the budget with no fixed time frame for repayment. So that's things you should consider. So think of something that really needs to be done, I guess. Or else well, forget it. Specific to that site. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Do you feel like that site really needs work? Like I know you just put it back the way it was. Do you feel like it's something bad's gonna happen again if it doesn't get mitigated better? Um, I mean if anything's possible. I mean if we had <laughs> if we have another it could very well happen again. Yeah. Most likely not the same magnitude because we put big stone in where it was washed out. Mm -hmm. So that big stone is more likely to hold up. But it seems like if, if, if we can get the question answered and get this clear, it's worth getting that 17,000 mm -hmm. to stone line that section of ditch. You know, mm -hmm. clean out the ditch properly, stone line it any collars that need to be upgraded. I mean, I'm thinking a lot of our collars are going to two foot now. The state requires 18 inches. So the next step is, is two foot. And I'm thinking that's what we gotta do with these rains that are coming. Mm -hmm. So I think that if we can get some money like this, then that section of the road, we don't have to think about it again. Mm. If we've got upsized collars, we've got stone, stone line, we don't have to think about that. We can put our regular budget money in other spots that don't get covered by this. So I think, mm -hmm. yes, absolutely, we should, you know, mm -hmm. push for this and try to get what more information we need and, and grab it on. So you don't need an H&H &H when you're improving, increasing the size of the culvert? Is that only when it's a stream? Or? It's a year-round stream. Okay. So if it's just a regular culvert that goes between ditches? If it's just surface water drainage, then okay. you don't need to. Oh, good. And yeah. is that the case in this section? Do you know it well enough to know? Uh, I don't think there's a year-round screen there. Okay. Cool. No, I don't think. But it's a good point, because now we know how long it takes to get an H&H. &H. Mm -hmm. We should start thinking about that. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, ultimately, Ultimately, these, the FEMA deadline is going to come for this July event. You know, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever it is, it's going to come eventually. <laughs> and without an extension, it's January 14th, 2025. Well, we're going to get an extension. 2025, okay. you said? On certain things, at least. That's not right. enough. I'm just saying, you know, this is a brand new thing, right? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. If we're going to jump on it, we should get the hydraulic studies, mm -hmm. get the stuff that we need to be able to do it. Not to mention the time for the road group to, to pull mm -hmm. it off yeah. in those deadlines. So we, you'll go take a look at it and then touch base with Skip about maybe recommendations and then Skip, you don't mind reaching out to Edmund to find if... Okay, thank you. <laughs> Sounds like a good plan. Mm -hmm. 
to Michael. stay away from those streams. Okay. Buck Lake Brook. Um, so uh, it was in March. Um, we had a number of people um, from the state come uh, to look at Buck Lake Brook. We started with uh, Kelly Rose Road and worked our way up and down. And part of that was um, when the um, H and H people were here to. Uh, look at the uh, bridges too. It kind of wasn't the original intention of that meeting, but that was a part of that. But it was a fellow named Ben Matthews who came, um, who was kind of a key trans permit person, but he did have quite a bit of uh, education and experience with um, uh, streams. And he did recommend a few um, mitigation things for the stream. I called the meeting um, because I wanted to try to figure out a way to um, do work on Buck Lake Brook so that the village doesn't get flooded all the time. Um, originally, the old store thing, that was that was what all of that started from, mm -hmm. is to, to um, have something done to the brook so that the village doesn't get flooded. And, and that just <coughs> kind of ended up with removing the, the old store. Um, so this was another step with that same question. Um, and there was a fellow from um, the CBRPC that was at that um, gathering also. Um, and at that point, I was there was funding from this flood resiliency, flood something or other that uh, Vermont Emergency Management um, was doing. And I was hoping to get um, some money from that, for at least for our, our engineering study. Um, and then that, that funding uh, dried up. Um, mm. The fellow from the CDRPC um, and the rest of the crew down there um, were aware of a brand new program. Um, it's, it's dealing with FEMA again, um, but FEMA has given um, the state uh, $90 million for um, hazard mitigation funding um, related to uh, flooding throughout the state. Um, and the, this money, um, the state would actually pay the 25% that is um, uh, the part, you know, with FEMA, it's 75% that they pay, and then the town comes up with a 25%. Um, the state pays some of that, but this would be no cost at all to the town. Um, no, no match, you said? No cost to the town, is that what no you said? No cost to the town at all, with this particular body of funding. Um, and it would, technically, it would pay for both the, uh, the study and the um, implementation of, of that work. Um, so it would pay for everything. Um, it would be, it's not going to happen the next year. It's like a three to five year project, probably. It would be dealing with FEMA, um, so things would move slow. I, it, pretty much feels like CDRPC would help with the, there's a pre-application that at this point is due August 16th. Um, they bumped the date out a number of times, um, but right at the moment um, there's a pre-application um, date. And that would be basically coming up with um, uh, an expression of the need for what's happened. So, um, we would need to gather information. I'm thinking that the information that you gathered originally, Diana, for the old store, um, I would like to talk to Paul Saruti about the costs that have incurred to the fire department. And then uh, somehow, I'm hoping that there is a record of the different times that the village has fled, like since I've been, um, which is, to my knowledge, is at least four or five times, if not more. Since I've been. Since I read? Mean. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Um, but I don't know for sure, so I'm hoping that somewhere there's a record. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. So we have to prove our, prove our case. I'm sure that it's going to be pretty competitive. Um, CDRPC will help us with the application. Um, and I'm kind of pursuing this uh, through the planning commission. Um, but it does seem to me that before we can ever consider anything that might happen in the village, we better do what we can do to uh, mitigate the flooding in the village. If we, if we can get water 
to the, this kind of floodplain here, the flat area, into the wetlands, and get it through the village to the other side of Route 14, mm -hmm. uh, I think we would be um, in much better shape. Um, so, and that's what uh, these mm -hmm. folks that came um, on, uh, on March um, also felt. Um, Do they see and point out anything along the way that... Yeah, like um, Ben Matthews good? came up with four or five things. Uh, like between the post office and the yellow house that's mm -hmm. that way, um, getting rid of the um, granite blocks that are on the uh, west side mm -hmm. of the city because the water is channeled there. Mm -hmm. um, doing some sloping like similar on the mm -hmm. east side of mm -hmm. 14 that V-Trans did. Uh, ben mentioned that um, we would probably have to periodically, like every three or four years or after any kind of flooding event, get a permit to dredge the brook, <laughs> to get rid of the stone that comes down. Um, you know, I mm. think the road crew did quite a bit of that, and I think mm. we trans did some. But it still wasn't down to the level it was before the flood mm. last um, summer. Um, mm. They were a little bit concerned with the box culvert on Cabot Road right up here because um, in its 90 degree turn at Ron's place, um, it's already starting to erode around the wings of the box culvert. Mm -hmm. um, and then doing something about what's happening on um, Rapper's property, where the you know the water is coming straight down and making a 90 degree turn. Um, mm -hmm. Water doesn't like to do that; it likes to go straight. So, but it does slow the water down. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So, <laughs> something, you know, some kind of permanent fix there. Um, mm. um, I can't, there was another, another thing that he mentioned too. Um, but yeah, he, he could see a lot of, you know, a, f a few things that would, that would probably mm. help. Um, the facts that the box culvert that got put in on Route 14 was not really the size that was recommended. Um, this one? Yeah. Really? Mm. Yeah. Recommended by uh, whoever, whoever recommended that after the flight. The H and H on Yeah. Um, <laughs> but they couldn't get the. They size. couldn't get the right size. No. And then with the December snow and melt, the water was right up to the top of that. Mm -hmm. So, but that's that's not probably going to get taken out. Of the, of the, you know, so. Um, yeah, I, I think it's worth a try to doing the pre-application um, for this. Um, but I would like to have a sense of a commitment from the town um, that um, if we were awarded um, this grant that we would kind of stick with it. It is a three or to five year project, um, which would be in the engineering first and mm -hmm. you know, all of those sort of steps. Um, and would you stick with it? Well, if I'm still alive, I might. <laughs> um, so. I'm not doing that again. Right. And I'm hoping that CBRPC is the one that will be given the fee, mm. not us. So is that your only hesitation? Is it, it's a four or five year project? In, in hesitation in pursuing this? Well, um, that's not a hesitation on my part, but it might be, um, you know, Times part and stuff, but it's part of, um, I, you know, I just feel that something needs to be done to to get the water um, out, you know, through the village and then into the this kind of flat floor plain area mm -hmm. that we have. I think that, Does anyone know whether the people in the yellow house are actually applying for well, buyout, or is that just a Paul, rumor? Paul Cerruti seems pretty definite that they are. Um, yeah, okay. Um, yeah. I don't know. You know I assume that if he feels that way, that it's true. Yeah, right? he would know. Yeah. Uh, so, mm -hmm. uh, so I guess um, you know what, what I would like permission to do is to just um, go through the pre-application process and um, we can see from there. If we were if we were awarded it and we decided mm -hmm. we didn't want to do it, um, mm -hmm. but there's no commitment. The if you want, I'll dig out some of that old information that I gathered on the uh, cost of, although, you know, the numbers from 
five plus years ago are going to look pretty small compared to <laughs> what would yeah, have happened in the meantime. But coming up with the facts of the yeah, what the village is. Uh, the picture of picture from the Gazette of uh, Bud, what's his name, that is out there. Bud Abbott. Yeah, Bud Abbott with his hip boots on, walking around his driveway. <laughs> yeah, I remember that photo. Yeah. He's long gone. I, th I would I, I would say yes, please do, but I don't want to speak for everybody. No, I, think I agree, a... and I would add a thank you for being willing to take that on. Sure. All right. Thank you. All right. Back to Skip on a proposed animal ordinance. Does anybody want lights on? No. All right. <laughs> proposed animal control ordinance. Which I believe you sent to us, right? Um, yes, I, I look at Diane as a proposed agenda. I think it was something regarding the dog cut. So it was just to uh, reacquaint the board with the two ordinances, one of which is an update to the existing animal ordinance, and the second one, the large domestic animal ordinance, could be great. The word hybrid. Ordinances again, just an update to the existing ordinance. So just, just to show the board that the documents are there, they're available, and act as you wish. Did you send us new links to those proposed ordinances? Okay. I saw them. Yeah. I think I probably didn't. I didn't oh, read them again. <laughs> and again, you guys make some more papers. There's only one ordinance that's new. I'm sorry? There's only one new ordinance. You're just saying that there would be an update to an existing one? The, uh, or a proposed update? Yeah, and the changes, we'd have to look at the old one and figure out what the changes are, or you could explain that at some point. Well, what I did though was 2019, and it was updated, uh, taking into account any changes to the state statute. Mm -hmm. Since we're dealing with law state, we have to rely on the state statute. So that mirrors the statutes of 2019, if the updates mm -hmm. as of 2019. And it's much more complete than the existing statute, which I think is dated 2011. So, you know, it's just, mm -hmm. here they are again, hello, I'm still here, you know, and, uh, Mm -hmm. If there was another animal complaint, it would be worthwhile, I believe, to take a look at these again. Or at least one. Well, yeah. since we're on the subject of animal complaints, I just would say that the one that we got two weeks ago from West Woodbury, I managed to get in touch with Dean Mercier, who was the, used to be the animal control officer in Hardwick, and now he does several other towns around. And I just happened to come across his name. I couldn't even remember it, but I said, that, that's the guy. I talked to him, and he was more than willing to go up and meet with those people. And um, he said he'd think about whether or not he might be able to be the Woodbury Animal Control Officer under contract. He knows what he's doing, certainly. And he, he went up to West Woodbury, he talked to the person who made the complaint, and he talked to the people who, the person who claimed that they're not his dogs. But anyways, at least there was some response. Uh, he said that uh, the person who had the dogs, that the dogs belonged to someone who used to live on his property. He moved away, but the dogs run back, and then he calls them, and the guy comes and gets his dog, and whatever. So, I, uh, he suggested that the complainant actually might take some pictures next time if this happens again. I should get back to him and suggest that. So. So he'll get back to us whether he's interested in. in hmm? He'll get back to us to, to to let us know whether he's interested. In yeah. 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 I also got another call from another guy from Hardwick who, as I guess, had talked to this dean and um, said he was interested in being our animal control officer. I said, well, since I don't know you, we don't know you. Do you want to come to a meeting? So he said he would 
come to one of our meetings. I mean, it would certainly be preferable to get somebody local, but if we can't, if we could find someone with some experience from another town, that'd be nice. We've got somebody willing to take it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Diana, was that Steve Mercier or Messier? Dean Merce. <coughs> Dean Mercier, I think. M E R C I E R. I can't remember now. Okay. All right, so Skip, your recommendation is that if we have more animal control complaints, that we, revi we revisit those two. It's such a slip. Yeah. Uh, the large, I mean, yeah, it's almost harder to get a, a dog control officer than s to get somebody to get uh, somebody who would also do the large animal complaints. Right. Yeah, I, I have read them, and I think you know that I have concerns about ordinances. Um, it's not for lack of appreciation to all the work that you've put in on those, but I just sort of, as a general rule of thumb, would prefer not to add ordinances of any kind, um, and that's just speaking as me, not for you guys, obviously. Mm -hmm. Well, again, one is just an update of the existing ordinance. So we, you know, that would be an addition. The only addition would be the, the uh, Can you tell us what that update is? To the, to the existing ordinance? Perfect. Can you tell us what the update is? You know, it happened in 2019. Okay. And so what was updated was to make sure that the statute stated, cited, and the 2011 ordinance still applied. And they did. So I don't know if I put, you know, changes to the document. I don't know if I cited what I changed. Mm -hmm. It's been a while since I've and fortunately, our large animal situations haven't been a problem lately. We haven't seen any eating our garden. All right. <laughs> Updates and other business. Um, Liz. Yep. Yep. Uh, so I called Rusty again this morning because I was so confused by all this paperwork. Um, but he helped me to narrow it down. Most of what he sent over wasn't stuff we needed to sign anyway, <laughs> um, which is partly why I was so confused by it. Um, so these three pages are what we actually do need to sign. And it's just a monitoring agreement with MEI. So they have a third party person who will do the monitoring. Um, it's $275 annually. It's self-renewing, so next year it'll renew basically unless, unless we tell them not to. Mm -hmm. um, so it's basically just one of us that has to sign it. I don't know if you guess this the chair. Is this the same uh, company that does the uh, monitoring for the school? Same exact thing. So I asked them to, as far as the people that were, that were listing to be the ones who were contacted, if there's an issue, um, I asked Rusty to list the people that the school has listed already, okay, yeah. which is, I wrote them down. It's Paul Williams. Nope. Nope. Um, it is Jason, somebody who works at the school, and um, Donnie Turgeon. And I think it's Jason. It's going to be on there someplace. Um, so anyways, they're already listed. I told them oh, to just okay. go ahead and do it, and okay. then I double checked with the school, and the school said it was okay. okay, okay. Thanks for doing that. Yeah, so, no problem. Oh boy. So they only want one signature? Mm -hmm. Yep, and they don't need your social security number. It's you can it asks for it somewhere, but he said you can leave that out. Give her tax ID on you? No, sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I 
like that. Thank you. Robin, could you, if I give this to you, do you think you could fill in the tax mm -hmm. ID number and then get it mailed out to MEI, which the address is on here? Sure. Okay, thank you. Go three something, that's all I know. So the town hall roof, um, that was one of my projects that I okay. have not completed. Yeah. Um, thank you for the RFP skip, <laughs> the sample RFP. And Michael, you sent those along. Um, we'll put it on the agenda yeah. for next meeting. I think uh, uh, this is the greatest school. So this is a big, much bigger project than the, uh, yeah, the, the library, library one. Would be more like Kind of you, is that the one you sent to? Yeah. Okay. okay. I, I should have printed that one out instead. And then why don't we um, flip these the complaint to the health department and um, we'll go to you for that. We'll, we'll flip those around. Uh, yeah, I don't know whether we should. I did not put in an executive session. So. For this complaint? Uh, yeah. That, but I would like to do it. I'd like to talk about it in an executive session. Okay. For reasons of? Just privacy. Is it the one we already talked about, or is this a new complaint? <sighs> yes, but different. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, actually, it's the same one we were going to do a site visit, and mm -hmm. you agreed to do a site visit with me, yeah. and so maybe we should just go ahead and do that. Plan to do that next week sometime. Yep, and then um, and then I can and then we'll talk about, about the complaints. Okay, at the, you still would like to do an executive session tonight, or we'll wait to the next. Well, meeting? I would like to, but I don't know how. You know, somebody might complain. If we didn't warn it, that's right. We can't do it if it's. <laughs> yeah, not we can do it. No, we can. We can. We can. We can call. We can have an executive session, session in the park. But it just needs. To, it just needs to be for a good reason. Gotcha. So it needs to be for personnel issues. Michael, you probably know all the other mm -hmm. reasons that oh, we yeah. can. Mm -hmm. But we're for, if we're talking about a sensitive topic for a community member, I'm not sure. No, it's that. not one. <laughs> it's not? Okay. I'm not really sure. Not just being decent, that's not allowed. All right. Yeah. So, so we'll... We'll just... I mean, technically, it could be for possible litigation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Depending on the nature of the day to day administrative matters. Let's see. Any communication? And is it possible to talk about it in open session without using names? Or is that a yeah, I guess we could do that. Yeah. So I just had another complaint, a uh, more serious complaint about the same people that were complained about last week. Okay. Last week, two weeks ago. Can you tell us what the complaint was? Uh, the complaint was a relative of one of the people that are living on the property that was complained about. I don't, <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> the kid's father. <laughs> but what did, like, what was the complaint? Like, what did they the, for, the people are living in squalor, basically. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yep. Yeah. I don't know how we can help somebody like that. Was it a threat to the public health? What? Was it... Well, that's the thing. It's, you know, as a public, as a town health officer, I have to deal with things that are, I can only deal with things that are a threat to the public health. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so it's, people who are not, don't, don't have proper sewage disposal, as long as it's not running onto somebody else's property, it's not something the health officer can really take a stand on. Uh, I would think if there was concern about a child mm -hmm. and their living circumstances, we're not the people to call for that. It would be like DC. Well, yeah, but if we could do a health officer report, it would help other levels. Gotcha. So let's go this week. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Good. Uh, no, that'd be next week. Okay, let's go next week. Okay. Which is what, the first week of July? Yes. Um, so earlier in the week is obviously probably better. 
probably don't want to go on the floor. Yes. So we have, like, is there a holiday or we could go on a try for Monday, Tuesday? Sure. Monday? Let's, let's, just, let's do Monday. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it's either got to be for me first thing in the morning or towards the end of the day. End of the day for me. Okay. You want to do it like one of the next two, <laughs> 11? I mean, I do, but. Yeah. Okay, so. Five fifteen. Does that work? Sure. Okay. So Diana, five fifteen, July first. All right. You want to meet here and then go up together? Okay. Yeah. We'll meet right up front here. Okay. All right. Sounds good. I mean, just, just, you know, the last time, I mean, after you've had the same experience as the last time Liz and I went up, like, nobody answers the door. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's really mm -hmm. difficult to actually yeah, well, we make can contact. Only, yeah, we but, can only do what we can do, I guess. You see a lot of stuff, not even going inside. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Oh, but this time I can bring this. <laughs> It's official. Somebody said they wouldn't talk to us unless they knew who we were. Got it. He's gone. The car has been moved. Yeah. I thought oh. I saw that it was not there. It just anymore. moved, but it's up. Somebody yeah. moved it. No kidding. Yeah. It's good. Huh. It's great. Nobody from the town. We didn't. Okay. okay. I heard it was an old white Dodge pickup for the trailer that took it. Uh oh. That right. sounds like Mike. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so I think that addresses our um, health department issue. Okay. And we're going to take a look at bills and payroll orders and approve those and sign them. And then we will adjourn at some point when we're done with that. So. Thanks, everybody. Gentlemen, have a good evening. Thank you. How about open up the door? Sure, let's do it. We're still off here right now. Do you want me to wait for these? Or is somebody going to drop them off? Probably the problem with this butter is going to be, I can bring over in the morning. Does that make any difference? I can pick up the chairs while you're signing. Okay. Uh, can I? Could you?
A quarter of a year worth of. Yeah. We did. And okay. we just didn't give him remember. any any personal time. Okay, got so, it. Yeah. Because he started like April, May, June. Yeah. So. Okay. I'm assuming that's why those were highlighted. Okay. Today was from that boy's. We're still on camera. Just oh, shoot. I thought he was. He unplugged it. I thought what? you were. I thought oh. you were finished. You could have brought your camera back. No, I'm no, letting the battery. I'm letting the battery do the rest. Fine. <laughs> Tricky. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm just going to let everybody look at this. 
Yeah. That is less than 40. Yeah, so? Well. So he doesn't get paid for 40. I, I thought, well. No, no that, that was a thing. We'll talk about it now, but. Okay. Um, but that goes to yep. this part of your paycheck, but you yeah. don't keep it, <laughs> unfortunately. The car bill is the ice I guess that's fluoride, right? Mm -hmm. well, fluoride goes on. Then doesn't that go on the dusty roofs? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, this is the ice or salt, so I guess maybe the carpenters. Which. Uh, Gillespie didn't ask for a deposit, Robert? No. I heard that on your proposal, but I figured that was just standard. And since we're such a good customer, they would trust us. Yeah, they uh, put the oil tank, pump down the oil tank out of the building. Good. So we don't have our propane set up. Oh, okay. Well, it's a good time of year to be without a heating system, I guess. Better now than February. That's right. Those are the Woodbury people that fought in World War II. Is that what that honor roll yeah. is? Are, are they all people that died in the war or no, no, that fought? Fine. Oh, I'm sorry that the uh, camera's still on. Oh, please stop. 
<laughs> they have an adjourn? Yeah, it's got a Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Nobody would watch to the end anyways, right? Like, they're done. Like, they're done. Yeah. 
Yeah. Like, I'm not cutting on them anymore. I was thinking about filing an insurance claim, but I don't know. I should $1,000. I should just ask. Whether it's I don't want to raise my rates or yeah. anything like that. Yeah. I've got a. We're not using our lavish right now. Oh, thank you. I've got a little while before if you want to. It's all water. Visibly very bad. Yeah. I'm not trusting it. Well, plus my 32 more. Yes. Yeah. All those favors. Bye. 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 Bye.